As 2020 draws to a close, it is important to take a bit of time and reflect on what happened this year as opposed to what didn't happen. For a lot of us, we had an opportunity to spend more time with family, focus on our work, learn a new skill or even start a new hobby. One hobby that was particularly popular in lockdown was gardening. With warm spring weather in Ireland, many people found themselves outside in the gardens and for many people this was the first time they had started gardening. Whether it was your first time or not though, there was a blooming interest in tending to plants this year. I talked to Peter Downall, also known as the Irish Gardener, about the increase in people gardening in lockdown and how they can keep up this hobby as the world starts to return to what it once was. So I, my name is Peter Dowdall. I've been gardening since I was knee-high, literally knee-high to a grasshopper. Um, uh, I suppose like many young children, I, I kind of developed a love of gardening at my mother's ankles as she was kind of potting up the bedding plants. and. Most most young children, I suppose, grow out of it. I regard myself as lucky because I didn't. I, I kind of got more and more into it uh, every day. Um, so then studied after, uh, studied horticulture after school and I've been working in the field ever since. Uh, I'm working in all aspects of, of amenity horticulture, if you like, in that I've worked in garden centres, nurseries, landscape companies. Uh, uh, I'm now a garden designer, so I do a lot of pointing and a lot of... Um, uh, le- less lifting of a shovel and more more of the the easier side of it. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, so then, just in relation to gardening and lockdown, as you were saying, uh, what do you think was what do you think made people want to garden? Why do you think it was such a popular activity to do? There's something innate within us, within all of us. It's, it's kind of where to start in answer to that question. We are all from from nature, if you like, and we'll all go back to nature when when our time is up, and the. And this isn't something unique to Ireland, but as society is becoming more and more urbanized and as we're removing ourselves from nature and from the countryside, um, we're seeing obviously huge increases in negatives, in mental health problems, in drug addiction, in loneliness, in I go on, there are more, but many, many of the mental health illnesses and problems are connected with us removing ourselves from the garden. So then we find ourselves in a situation where we're in lockdown and for, for you know, several weeks and months, we were only allowed within two kilometers and five kilometers of our home. And all of us, myself included, developed an absolute new appreciation for that green environment, the landscape, the garden, whatever you want to call it, within our 2Ks and within our 5Ks. I mean, we've all been rushing around going hither, hither and yon over the last number of years. And it's only when we're forced to stop. And I've regarded the lockdown. Now, I'm very, very, very lucky. I haven't been directly affected by the lockdown and, and my heart goes out to obviously to anybody who has, but for those of us who haven't, I found it a very positive experience. I've, you know, we, we were going out for walks with our children. We're admiring the trees. We're looking at things coming into flower. We're watching the seasons go by and we're doing it, you know, slowly. We're not rushing everywhere. We're, we're seeing the trees coming into leaf. So, a long-winded answer to your question. I think we we people got into gardening. Perhaps the the the, the trite answer to that is because there was nothing else they could do. There was time, but I think it goes much deeper than that. I think there is there is a connection, and there was a connection uh, that brought people to the garden to get their hands dirty. Kids, I mean, it, it, as I said at the start, it's innate within all of us. Uh, kids again inherently know how to grow a seed how to grow a bulb they, they, they it comes naturally to them as to, to how to do this as adults a lot of us if we haven't been doing it all our lives we doubt ourselves and we forget um but it's something that's within all of us gardening is the most simple and basic thing we can do after eating breathing and drinking gardening is is the next on the list as far as i'm concerned um and we're all of course we're all also too aware of of the 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 modern day problems, I suppose, if you will. I've, I mentioned mental health, but we've also got climate change. We've got biodiversity uh, loss, you know, species extinction, physical obesity, and all these things. The solution, if you like, or remedies to all of these things is to be found in the garden or that word again, the green environment. Um, and I think that goes hand in hand with this newfound love of gardening during the lockdown. Yeah, definitely. Um, so obviously the lockdown we just left actually today is um, was very different to the first one because we didn't have that kind of getting to go out, you know, with the nature and stuff. Um, you think uh, gardening, was there any possibility of having it done over the second lockdown? Like what advice would you have given people going forward with it? Well, well, I mean, you're right. I suppose the second lockdown that we have just come out of 
because the weather was was and because of the time of the year, the weather wasn't as encouraging us to go to go outside. Uh, the, the, the evening getting longer, the days getting shorter. It's not whether that you want to go out into the garden. However, there's still an awful lot of work to be done in the garden. And uh, in the garden, we're always thinking a season ahead or even two seasons ahead. So during autumn and winter, it's, n- it's now time, if you like, to be planting the bulbs for next spring. Uh, I'm just staring here at a load of peony roots and dicentras and summer flowering perennials. They all need to be planted now for, for colour next year. It's also the time, obviously, to make the garden, to put, it to, to put it to bed for the winter, if you like, clean it up, tidy it up cut back a lot of the stuff that needs to be cut back, make it safe, obviously, so that you, you don't uh, slip and break your neck on, on hard landscaping, paving or decking or anything like that. Um, but then and you've also preparing the veg beds, manuring them and things like that, getting them ready for next season. Uh, there's a lot to be done in the garden at this time of the year. Yeah, I think a lot of people probably wouldn't even think of it in that sense. Um, so then just, obviously, as we know, a lot of people have started it this year with the whole, like, the being so close to your house and stuff so then just a lot of people now possibly with going back to work and they won't be as connected to their homes and their communities um what would be your like tips to people who may have started it um and next year might have less time just to kind of encourage them to keep doing it you know very good question evan and the the conversation i've been having with people over the last six and twelve months i suppose is you know I, i mentioned obviously that so many people have developed this newfound appreciation for the natural world and for, for, for what's all around us. But then when we go back to, in inverted commas, normality, uh, which will hopefully be something over the next few months as the vaccine begins to take hold. Uh, yes, a lot of people will forget everything that they learned, like for want of a better word, this year. But then many people won't. Many people will keep that appreciation and develop it further and further over the next couple of years. But for those, I mean, obviously, goes without saying, a lot of people will have a lot less time to spend in their gardens, yes. So the, the advice and the tips that I would give to them would be, you know, it may sound obvious, but don't bite off more than you can chew. In other words, don't go and, and as as the, the last spike in, particularly in allotment gardening and grow it yourself gardening, the last spike in popularity in that was with the, the financial meltdown 10 or more years ago now. And what I, the feedback I would get from a lot of people in the years afterwards was, oh, I bought, you know, 20 packs of seeds and I bought, you know, 10 raised beds and I had an allotment here and an allotment there. And sure, as I said, gardening is very basic. There's no mystery to it, but it does take time. It is time consuming. So bear in mind, if you get one packet of lettuce seeds from your local garden center, uh, there could be 2000 lettuce seeds in it. So if you plant your 2000 lettuce seeds, that's that's one full allotment. And that's enough. That's enough lettuce for the county for for a couple of weeks during the year. So just pick a few a few things that if it's vegetables, pick a few things that you want to eat. uh, And don't be don't be going for the overly difficult ones and ones that, you know, the kids will eat. And then don't don't sow all 2000 seeds at one time. Just sow a few at a time and do it over a number of weeks so then the, the your work is also reduced you're not harvesting a thousand lettuce at the same time you're getting five or six a week um in terms of flowers i would look go go for your perennial plants your bedding plants and if those are, are as opposed to your bedding plants rather perennial plants bulbs uh, and maybe leave the bedding plants because they're far less work and if those words mean mean nothing to you if they're confusing it just a perennial plant is quite simply a plant that grows every year a bulb is something like an apple that you put in the ground it dies back and it comes on every year they're very very easy for once the work is done you plant them at this time of the year anytime as i say kind of autumn winter early spring they'll flower away for you you're connecting them to that energy that is the soil they, that magic nature then does the work so once you put them into the plug them into the energy if you want to put it that way plant them in the soil that's it you can forget about them they're going to flower away every year for you after that uh, i do have a gorgeous garden with bedding plants you're you're changing them three and four seasons of the year and you're doing it every year that that's quite a lot of work that's high maintenance so i'd look to perennial plants and bulbs and in the edible garden stick to things that that you're 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 going to eat and not too many yep very good um yeah so i think that's kind of covered everything that i had um just I kind of we covered I had it down about the mental health and obviously like the first lockdown versus the second but I think we kind of covered that uh, so do you have anything else you'd like to add uh, I don't think I don't think particularly I suppose just to the to... point that in, on mental health because it can't be overstated the the, the power the, the importance of of gardening to, to our, our mental health and the therapy that we get from the garden that cannot be overstated and uh, on my own Facebook page over the last six, nine months, which is the Irish Gardener, um, the amount of 
feedback and the amount of communication I was getting with people, strangers to me, but just we all have a shared interest in the garden. Uh, the page got very, very vibrant during the year. Like we were reaching over 300,000 people a week, right? Just converting the garden. It's not a sales page. It's nothing like that. It's just a page where we share gardening information. Um, but so many, the reason I bring that up is because so many of those conversations and so much of that communication was all positive. It was, you know, and it's not people, you know, flying a flag and saying, oh, this is wonderful. We're all gardeners and our mental health is perfect. It's nothing like that. It's just so many people did see this as an opportunity and so many people did benefit as the last six or nine months has been part of the fun. But, you know, it's been a growing experience for a lot of people. And uh, instead of just being looked at, you know, uh, instead of just looking at the last six or nine months as a period of enclosure and government restrictions, et cetera, et cetera, been great. It's been a great time because, as I said, we've got to spend time. I mean, I can't think of anything else that would have happened in my lifetime that would have forced me to stop, stay within my own garden, play with the kids, go for walks in my own neighbourhood. I think it's fantastic. And and many, many people have, do have had the same experience. My heart goes out uh, to those, obviously, who've been affected directly by the disease, but also to those who don't have access to green space. And it's, it's a good chance to give another call out to the governments and local authorities all over the country the importance of access to green spaces for everybody. This country, unfortunately, we're a hundred years behind the curve. We're still struggling to see the importance in sweet trees, where the rest of the world has moved far beyond that. I mean, that's a given. We're looking at things like green roofs, green walls, technology. You know, we're, we're looking at that green infrastructure in alleviating the, the, the effects of, of flood damage and, and slowing rainwater. Like, we are a light years behind. Uh, the even just the, our, our friends in Europe we're light years behind the EU uh, America, parts of America, parts of England we are light years behind in, in our appreciation of and our, the value we put on the green environment in this country uh, mental health, physical health, climate change species, everything uh, it, has, it has a role to play